Welcome to a parent's guide for navigating the virtual classroom. We will be providing you with videos on various topics to help you assist your child when they are learning from home. We hope you will join us on our live discussion forums where we will explore each of the topics posted here in greater detail and answer any questions you may have. Our first instructional video is going to be on Google Meet expectations and workspace management. The three tutorials we will go over in this video are setting up a productive workspace, steps to join a Google Meet, and strategies and tips for engaging your child while they are learning from home. Welcome to tutorial number one, setting up a productive workspace. It is important to set up a personal work environment for your child, something they will take pride in. You should set up a desk. This will serve as an area for their personal space. We suggest posting any reminders near their desk or workspace. This may include a daily schedule that the student must follow and even a clock. Information posted should be updated as the school year progresses and or classes and electives change. We suggest your child sits in a chair with back support. This will help promote good posture. It is recommended to avoid chairs that swivel. Keeping the computer device at eye level is important. This will promote focus, engagement, and avoid students straining their necks. When in a, when in a seated position, Remind students to place their feet on the floor to also promote focus and reduce any pressure on the back. Beds and couches are not a good substitute for a desk and a chair. Students should be encouraged to remain upright during lessons. Also keep the room bright and monitor lighting. If you have multiple students who are virtually learning in the household, it is suggested to keep their workspace separate. If this is not possible, we recommend placing a barrier between them to reduce distractibility. This is a great example of an ideal workspace. Setting up your workspace. We are going to go through some materials that your child should have at their workspace to ensure they are prepared for class. Your child should be using their school-issued Chromebook so teachers can monitor student engagement. Be sure your child's workspace is located near an outlet so they can charge their Chromebook when needed. Their charger should always be at their workspace. Also at your child's workspace should be writing materials, any notebooks, folders, or textbooks your, your child has been provided, a calculator if needed, and a mouse. It is important to reduce distractions at your child's workspace. Encourage your child to use personal headphones to block out any background noises that can be distracted. If possible, all other electronics your child has should be removed or deactivated during the school day. The learning environment at home should resemble the learning environment in school and the use of electronics during school is prohibited. Another way to reduce distractions is placing a desk divider around your child's workspace to help them maintain focus. Welcome to tutorial number two, joining a Google Meet. We are going to go through the steps on how to join a Google Meet. We will first visit the Google homepage. Once we are on our Google homepage, we will click the waffle on the top right of our screen. We will then select the Google Classroom icon. Once you are in Google Classroom, you will select the class that you would like to join. In the header, you will see the Meet link. We will now click this link to join the Google Meet. Be sure to mute yourself before joining your Google Meet. 
and always remember to have your camera on. Once you are ready, you can click join now. Hi, Ms. Volpe, it's so nice to see you. Hello, Ms. Hudson. I love that you're muted and your camera is on. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Ms. Hudson? Great, we're going to go over some Google Meet expectations. Here are some steps to prepare for a successful session. For parents, make sure your children's Chromebook is charged, that they are prepared, that they have headphones available, and they have their materials organized, as well as they're ready and they're signed into their Google accounts. They should enter their Google Classrooms using the Meet link at the top of the Google Classroom to join each of their designated classes. As soon as they enter the Meet, even before the video goes on, they should mute themselves. Their video should always be on, and if they cannot see the instructor, they should pin the teacher's presentation to their screen. To do so, they just need to click the push pin icon to enlarge the teacher's screen. Remind your children to chat responsibly. If they have a question, they can use the chat box and put a question mark in it. If they have something to share, they can put an explanation point. And encourage them to participate. Stay focused, be attentive, be respectful, and be an active participant. This includes following all directions and actively taking notes. Let's review some things parents can do to support their children during the Google Meets. Ms. Wolpe? Yes, I will go through some ways we can support our children when they are learning from home. It is important to always check in with your child throughout the school day. Leave a post-it note with reminders. For example, keep your camera on. Praise your child if you hear them actively participating. Simply pop your head in the room and just say, I am so proud of you. Redirect your child if you see they are distracted or off task. Encourage your child to take movement breaks in between periods. Sometimes sitting at the computer all day gets exhausting. Provide putty or a stress ball if needed. This concludes tutorial number two. Welcome to tutorial number three. This tutorial will provide strategies and tips that could help your son or daughter navigate in a Google Meet. Tip number one chat feature. The chat feature can help students advocate for themselves during a Google Meet. Step one is to click on the chat icon, which is up in the top right corner. Step two is to then write the message for your teacher or if you want to help another classmate. You send your message by clicking on the arrow. Step three is to wait for the teacher to answer, whether it's in the chat or out loud. You can close the chat by clicking close. And when you receive a message back, there will be a little number one next to the response. You can open it back up to check the response. Tip number two, hand raising feature. The hand raising feature is another way for your son or daughter to advocate for themselves or to participate during the Google Meet. The hand raising feature can be found on the bottom right hand side. You can first click on the icon to alert the teacher that there is a question. Once your teacher is called on you, you could move over here to the mute. You could unmute to speak to the teacher. Once your question is answered, you can lower your hand. Tip number three, pinning the screen. When a teacher shares their screen, selecting the pin icon 
in the center of the screen will enlarge their lesson. This will also remove the grid view distractions and allow you to see the notes more clearly. Once your teacher has presented their screen, find where that screen is, scroll over it, and a little black box should appear. You're going to click on the pin. That pin will allow your teacher's screen to take up the entire space. Your notes will be larger and there will be less distractions. Managing multiple tabs during class. When you are virtual, never close the Meet tab. You may need to have two, three, or more tabs open at once. Open a new tab when you need to open additional work or do research. If you look at the image below, you'll see students can complete classwork and still hear the teacher from the Google Meet tab. Students may need to switch between tabs throughout class. When asked to open a new tab, they would select the plus button at the top of the bar all the way to the right. Tip number four, splitting the screen in three simple steps. When taking notes, playing Kahoot, or if you find it difficult to manage multiple tabs, you can look at two tabs at the same time. Splitting the screen. The first step is to open the tabs that you're going to need for class. Here are the two tabs I need. I have my Google Meet open and I have the notes that I'm going to take open. My second step is gonna to be to minimize the web browser the Minimize button is in the top right corner and it's the middle one. Once I click it, it's going to minimize and I'm going to drag it to the left side of my screen. The last step, I'm going to click and hold one of the tabs. I'm going to drag that tab away and place it on the other side of the screen. Tip number five presenting the screen. In class, you may need to share information or your screen with a teacher or a classmate. This will help. When presenting the screen, the first step is to click on the bottom right where it says present now. That'll give you three choices. The best way to do this is to select a window. Once you select the window that you would like to share, click Share. Sometimes it could take a few seconds to present. Tip number six, Google Meet from phone. You may hear somebody say, my Chromebook isn't charged. There's a nice, easy solution. Step one is to install the Google Classroom app on your phone. You're gonna log in using your school account. Once you have opened the app, you're gonna select the class that you would like to join. Step three, in the top right corner, there is a Google Meet icon. You're going to select it. And step four, you're going to select mute and then click on join. This way, you'll never miss class. This concludes our Google Meet expectations and workspace management tutorial. Please join us on January 25th at 7 p.m. for the live forum. Bring any questions you have and we'll be happy to answer them.